Mai kala o ili ha e ha e ahali i ka mole o le hua le hana kahi i ke ala a me ke nau na o pana ewa mai ka pali ka pule hua ka pali o a ala loa o wai ehu ho o nu a ka le hua ne ne e o ka ana le ma never never o poli hua kapu palu palu o kana loa i ka pali ohu ohu hale mano i ka lau le hua O kawa i nui moku lehua, aina nui make kau. He maka lehua ke ia no kuku o ne hanao. A he kipona aloha ke ia, mai ka pai aina o hawai'i. A hiki lo aku i ka aina o na ili ula, a mena ili pua kea o maleka. E like me ka hoi ana o na o opu ai lehua i ka mapuna puna. Ma o ke ia papahana ho o lau kanaka, Maka paina punai vele. E kua no ono kako e pili ana i ko kako o ma puna puna a me kona hanai ana ya kako. E hoi i ua ma puna puna la. E hoi ka mole. E hoi ka aina. E hoi ka piko. E hoi no i ke kahua. Me oko ka velina o ke aloha i ke i ala. Mahalo for joining us today for the first installment of our Consortium of Asian American Theaters and Artists CONFESS virtual series entitled Return to the Source. I'm Haile Opua Baker from Kapa'a Kauai. I'm a board member of Kata and one of the co-chairs for the seventh National Asian American Theater Conference and Festival. My name is Leilani Chan and I am the other co-chair I was born and raised in Honolulu, Hawaii, and I am the founding artistic director of Tiara Productions, a nomadic theater of color based in Los Angeles. Aloha mai kakou. I am Ryan Iwaoka Iolelo Suioka, originally from Kaneohe Oahu, currently residing in Mo'ili'ili, Oahu. I am happy to bring my experience as an arts administrator, a theater artist, and a hula practitioner to my role as local coordinator for Kata Confest in Hawaii. This series was designed to bridge conversations with theater artists of color, ground us in our artistry, and foster community collaboration via this uh, virtual platform. We hope that gathering each month will encourage discussion around relevant topics and issues that we are facing during these uncertain times of the global pandemic. The series is not intended to replace the actual physical gathering, rather we hope to build anticipation and momentum leading up to the event where we can gather and celebrate with one another in person. You know, if all had continued as planned, we would currently be welcoming conference attendees to Hawaii, holding conference sessions and prepping for stage productions as we speak. <laughs> However, we are living a very different reality as we continue the process of determining whether we will be able to responsibly convene in Hawaii for Confest mm -hmm. even in May, 2021. So for the purposes of this virtual series and today's events, we will proceed with the intention that we will be able to come together and celebrate in person next year. Kata is the Consortium of Asian American Theaters and Artists. Kata's mission is to advance the field of Asian American theater through a national network of organizations and artists. We collaborate to inspire learning and share and share knowledge and resources to promote a healthy, sustainable artistic ecology. Kata envisions a strong, sustainable Asian American theater community that is in, an integral presence in the national culture, evocative of our past, declarative of our present, and innovative towards our future. I am proud to be one of the founding board members of Kata. Now, what is Kata? Or what is Confest? Kata began with the first National Asian American Theater Conference in Los Angeles. This was followed by the first National Asian American Theater Festival in New York. 
Since then, Kata has produced conferences and festivals in different locations across the continental US every two to three years. When Kata returned to Los Angeles in 2010, the conference and festival came together to become what is now referred to as CONFEST. Through CONFEST, the visibility of Asian American theater artists has increased significantly in the last 10 years. In 2016, CONFEST took place at Oregon Shakespeare Festival. Some of the highlights featured here are the keynote address by Roberta Uno, Beyond Orientalism Conversations led by Emilia Cachetero, and a gathering of West Asian, Arab, and Middle Eastern theater practitioners and community workshops with refugee families and youth from Portland and Salem, Oregon. Confest uh, 2018, most recently, took place in 2018 at, uh, in Chicago and was hosted at the Victory Garden and DePaul University. In addition to festival performances selected from a national application process, Kata tries to make sure to connect local Asian American theaters and artists to the festival and conference. So we were able to invite some to perform as part of the Hot Asian Everything Showcase, uh, which included Stir Friday Night, an improv group, um, and Kamal Hans from Rastaka Theater, um, both theaters based in Los Angeles, uh, based in Chicago. <laughs> now, um, when Kata was planning Confest Chicago, we there was a request made that we would include Native Hawaiian artists as a member uh, and as a member of the board. I wanted to make sure that we didn't create a panel of Hawaiian artists that would meet on the side and no one would go to it. So I challenged the board to consider centering the voices of Native Hawaiian theaters uh, practitioners and make sure that we have Native Hawaiian artists throughout the programming. Thankfully, the Kata board was enthusiastic and supportive. So Haile Opua, what did you think when I reached out to you uh, to be the opening keynote speaker for Kata Confest Chicago? <laughs> mahalo, Leilani. Um, again, mahalo for the invitation uh, because it has definitely changed things for me. Uh, first, I was surprised. I was also honored and puzzled because I had not identified as an artist who would be considered as Asian American. Yeah, and, and you know, Kata from the beginning, we talk about an expansive and inclusive definition of theater and Asian American. And just because the acronyms aren't in the acronyms of the NH and the PI, that was always our intention. And we were really excited. I was really excited to that you were able to come and open up the conference and festival. Uh, we did a lot of work making sure that we connected with the Hawaii community so that um, they felt welcome at the festival. And it was a good thing we did because uh, the Aloha Poke Bowl protests started coincidentally that like the week before. So in addition to prepping for tech, all of the artists from Hawaii were also talking to the community in Chicago um, so that when the artists arrived, you know, you all went to the protest and then <laughs> <laughs> and then to the showcase and then the plenary the next day. And it was just, Oh, it's just all meant to be. Um, we had invited Moses Goods and Inamona Theater to be part of the Hot Asian Everything. Christopher Morgan um, was already scheduled in the festival to present his solo work, Pohaku. We also invited Coco Chandelier, AKA Sammy Acuna, to host the first ever drag bingo. And in order to kick off the festival, we made sure that following the keynote, there was a conversation um, that Coco moderated um, with all of the Native Hawaiian artists pre present um, so that we could hear what was on your minds as artists and as Kanaka Maoli. Hi. And, you know, I remember following that plenary of Kanaka Maoli artists, um, Moses and I, who were on the panel, um, we had both had this feeling in our na'au that we needed to reciprocate that aloha that was extended to us. And so just before the plenary was over, we both looked at each other and at the same time, we both said they need to come to Hawaii. And so I believe it was later that evening we had extended the that invitation and 
plans started to happen right away. And we had this conversation and there was a lot of excitement about that. Yes. And that was taking on a big kuleana. Uh, the act of welcoming is an important responsibility in our local culture rooted really in our traditional practices. Hawaii is well known for our diverse population. The result of Polynesian migration, American and European imperialism, along with indentured servitude immigration from Asia, Oceania, and elsewhere to meet the labor needs of the Western colonial capitalist interests. And also refugee immigration as the outcome of American militarism. Today, 38% of Hawaii's residents identify as Asian, 25% as Haole, 10% as Native Hawaiian or Pacific Islander, and a full 24% identify as multi-ethnic. Making the dynamics of racial minority and majority differ greatly as compared to the continental US. But don't worry, racism is alive and well in Hawaii. With the indigenous community, the most recently arrived immigrant communities, and our communities with the darkest skin being the most likely to be targeted by an unjust criminal justice system, and the least likely to hold the resources, wealth, and power of our unjust economic system. These structures result in these same communities feel, feeling the harshest impacts of the COVID-19 pandemic. Making theater in this environment can look similar to theater that happens in other places. We have no shortage of fully staged musicals and Shakespearean productions. But here, casting an Asian Sally Bowles or a Hawaiian Prospero isn't daring or revolutionary theater. It's just theater in Hawaii, colonized theater in Hawaii more exciting and the reason kata is bringing confess to hawaii is the local theater movements and hanakiaka truly hawaiian theater both telling hawaii stories written by hawaii's playwrights produced in stage with a hawaii perspective our local partner theater companies honolulu theater for youth kumukahua theater t-shirt theater and inamona theater company all have a commitment to creating theater by, for, and of our communities through empowering local playwrights, engaging cultural practitioners in the creation and production of their works, and partnering with community leaders to grow their talent bases and audiences. Kata hopes to amplify the work of our local partner theater companies and the work of emerging individual local theater artists by presenting them alongside some of the best of Asian American theater. So we can find affinity and solidarity, deepening the connections we already share. This further develops Kata's network of POC artists while providing greater avenues for Hawaii theater artists to collaborate with theaters of color worldwide. One vital center for the incubation of local theater and for the transmission of indigenous knowledge is the University of Hawaii at Manoa, our host for Confest Hawaii. Haile, can you tell us more about UH? Hi, hi. So with the hope that a vaccine is found, that large gatherings can once again resume and responsible travel to Hawaii will be safe for our community here and the Malihimi who will visit. We acknowledge the University of Hawaii at Manoa as the host location for the 2021 CONFEST. With the support of Dean Peter Arnaud of the College of Arts, Languages and Letters and the faculty and staff of the Department of Theater and Dance, the Hawaiian Theater Program is honored to be hosting the Kata CONFEST here at the University of Hawaii at Manoa. I want to express my gratitude to my colleagues for supporting me and the Hawaiian Theater Program in this endeavor. I extend a special mahalo to our production manager, Rick Griever, and our chair, Marcus Wessendorf, for their generous collaboration and advocacy in hosting the conference festival. The CONFEST will provide an exceptional opportunity for faculty, staff, and students alike 
to experience and engage with theater artists of color from across the continental US, the Pacific, and as far away as North Africa. We are so very excited for this unparalleled window of opportunity to become a nexus for Asian American, Pacific, Hawaiian, and indigenous theater artists. As the youngest program in the Department of Theater and Dance, the Hawaiian Theater Program is, the Hawaiian Theater Program produced its inaugural Hanakiaka or Hawaiian medium production in the spring of 2015. Performed completely in the Hawaiian language, La Ie Kawai featured a traditional story, dance, song, and oratory. Mahalo to OEV Television for that trailer and archiving the production, which is available on their website with subtitles for all to view. We thought that this virtual series would be the opportune time to explain and ground our conversations in the theme for the upcoming confess, which is Ku'u Aina, Ku'u Piko, Ku'u Kahua, Return to the Source. Our beloved land, umbilical cord and foundation serve as inspirations for everything we do in Hawaii. Being as we have all come from the land, our umbilical cord reaches, it reaches to it, stringing together the multitudes of generations that are our foundation. Before us were our mothers and grandmothers, and before them was the land. If it were not for them, we would not be. And so to our beloved Aina, Pico, and Kahua, we pay homage to thee. Aina is our land. It is the soil, the nourishment that grows from it. It is the water that travels from mountain to sea. It is the grains of sand ingrained within us. Aina is the ground at our feet, the cliffs, at our backs and all the trails we trek into our path to our source. That source is our pico, our umbilical cord, our navel. We connect to that pico to connect to ourselves and all who made us. When we recognize and honor that connection to people and place, we pay homage to those who have empowered us to be here. We stand on the shoulders of those giants. They are our kahua. Our kahua is our foundation and our stage. We have a famous olelo noel, a proverb here in Hawaii. Mamua ke kahua, mahope ke kukulu. First is the foundation, then the construction. It reminds us of practical knowledge. Of course, any carpenter of wisdom would not build a house on eroding sand, but it also reminds us to respect our roots. It teaches us that in order for us to make the world our stage, we must make right what goes behind the curtains. When the kahua is sturdy, so too are our feet when we perform. As we will be, as will be our voices, which echo the homage of our Aina and Pico in our song. The reciprocal relationship of Aina, Pico, and Kahua enable us to return to and reconnect to the source. The source is our Aina. The source is our Pico. The source is our Kahua. In recognizing each of these three things, we are able to communicate 
with the divine inspiration that is our source. For the upcoming conference portion of the 2021 conference, we are honored to announce our three esteemed keynote speakers. In May, following each keynote address, these speakers will be joined by other theater artists and scholars for a plenary discussion on topics relevant to our gathering. Our first keynote speaker is Dr. Keave Lopez, an Associate Professor of Hawaiian Language and the current Director of Kawai Huelani Center for Hawaiian Language. An accomplished composer and musician whose work is highly regarded in our community, he leads Kawai Hona Akealoha, Kapapahana Ho'oheno Mele, an interactive resource center for the promotion, preservation, and perpetuation of mele, song and poetry, and also mele practitioners. The center helps to create venues that highlight mele and mele practitioners, provides educational opportunities that support Hawaiian language revitalization and restoration efforts through the learning of mele and the practice thereof. Kumu Keave and his wife, Kumu Tracy Lopez, are the Kumu Hula of the award-winning Halau Hula, Kala Onohimai O Ha'e Ha'e. Situated in Pu'ahu Ula on the Winner District of Oahu, their Hula School provides a rich learning environment upholding a legacy of Mele Hula and Mele Oli that have been passed down through the generations. In preparation for the conference, I've been in conversation with our keynote speakers about the conference theme and how it connects with their artistic work. Now, Kumu Kiave, who regularly collaborates with the Hawaiian Theater Program, centers the Aina of Manoa in much of his curriculum. He honors Manoa in his mele compositions and his creative and academic work such as his recent publication with Dr. Ipolani Kanahele Wong, Akaka Manoa. In his capacity as director of Kawai Hueleni, he recently launched a video series named for the win of Manoa on opportunities for Hawaiian language students and the university at the University of Hawaii at Manoa. Here is the first install of Ia kuku na ma o ia mea he kula o lalo Hawaii ke po o wainui e loa mai ia i na au wai o katike. La kumpula ka i tāu koe pe, la mea ko mai mai i tāu koe pe o wili a pa, ko ku mea.
Our second keynote speaker is Dr. Sammy Choi, a respected scholar and theater director who is known for her work with playwright Victoria Nalani Nubo and the Hawaii Pono'i Coalition. These collaborations have focused on the history of Hawaii, such as the site-specific performances of Mai Puina at Iolani Palace. Dr. Choi was co-producer of Hawaii Public Radio's Aloha Shorts and co-editor of Bamboo Ridges, The Best of Aloha Shorts. She is currently collaborating on the development of a theatrical presentation comparing the U.S. Constitution with the constitutions of the Hawaiian Kingdom. Dr. Choi is a lecturer of theater at Kapi'olani Community College and a visiting lecturer of Asian American drama and theater at the University of Hawaii at Manoa. In an email conversation with Sammy, she had this to say about her practice and research and its connection to Kahua. For the last decade, I have been primarily directing theater about Hawaii's history produced by a Native Hawaiian coalition. To contextualize, I am a U.S. theater practitioner of Asian descent working with an indigenous activist group to remind and inform a variety of audiences of this land's history and the wrongs still to be righted. Keynote speaker of Nati Poro, Nati Rakawa, and Nati Kahununu descent, Pone Kouka is an acclaimed Maori writer, director, and co-founder of the theater production house, Tawata Productions. Producing the works of emerging and established Maori and Tawiwi or non-Maori playwrights. He has had plays produced in South Africa, Britain, Hawaii, Canada, Australia, New Caledonia, New Caledonia as well as throughout New Zealand with two plays being translated into French and Russian. Pone has published five books and has worked as a development executive at the New Zealand Film Commission and in the Radio New Zealand Drama Department. Pone became a member of the New Zealand Order of Merit for Services to Contemporary Maori Theatre in June 2009. For the past 11 years, Hone and his partner, Media George, have produced Breaking Ground, a festival of new writings and new plays that call together Maori and Pacifica playwrights. Breaking Ground was born from Native Earth Performing Arts Development Platform, Wisijik Begins to Dance Festival, where Media and Hone were invited to attend and participate in 2009 and 2010. I am grateful for having had the privilege of attending and participating in the Breaking Ground three years ago, where a play of mine was workshopped in the festival. It was inspirational to bear witness to the amazing work that Miria and Hone are doing to elevate Maori and other artists of color in Aotearoa. Tawata Productions has become the pico or the center for the development of Maori and Pacifica theater. And we'd like to extend our gratitude to Keave, Sami, and Hone for being agreeing to be our keynote speakers. We look forward to these esteemed artists sharing their creative endeavors with us and for framing the 2021 Confest. Now that you've met our wonderful keynote speakers, you might be curious about the theater productions we'll be presenting during Confest Hawaii. So without any further ado, we'll be announcing publicly for the first time our 2021 festival productions. Drum roll, please. One hundred forty pounds. How beauty killed my mother, by Susan Liu, from Seattle, Washington. Digging to Cambodia, by Sarita So, Auckland, Aotearoa. Ada, questions for my father, 
by Aya Aziz, New York City. Christina Wong for Public Office by Christina Wong from Los Angeles, California. Locus of Control by Jason Bayani from San Francisco, California. The Long Way by Pratik Matwani, Blue Lake, California. The Red Shador, Genesis One by Anira Yu Ali, Tacoma, Washington. We'll be featuring these artists in upcoming installments of our virtual series with sneak peeks and discussions on their productions. But today, keeping our focus on Hawaii, we are excited to introduce our two Hawaii-based festival production artists, Kelly e. Keola Simpson with his devised theater production, No Rules, and Melissa Orozco Vargas with her Theater for Young Audiences production, Keiki Kalo. We present Keola and Melissa alongside Kata board member Moses Goods, speaking on their relationships with Aina, Pico, and Kawa. Melissa Orozco Vargas is a recent graduate from the University of Hawaii at Manoa with, a, with an MFA in theater for young audiences. We asked Melissa how she integrates Aina into her work. My history in performance and performing arts began with my childhood in Hula. And Hula is rooted in Aina, in nature. Even when talking about people, there are references to nature. The theatrical work that I create, especially for and with children, is about connecting with the Aina and developing our relationship with and respect and love for her. Children growing up in Hawaii experience a lot of Aina, or it is my hope as a mother that they do so. So it is only natural that we make theater that is about kalo, taro, or ohi alehua, metro sideros, polymorpha, one of our most important trees, in order to develop and deepen this relationship. For me as a theater maker, being presented with this challenge of making Aina-inspired work opens up a world of create, creative opportunity where I'm seeking stories, chants, songs, dances, sounds, protocol that are related to these elements of Aina and give our future stewards and protectors beautiful and holistic experiences of the land. Kata board member Moses Goods is a native Hawaiian independent theater artist and founder of Inamona Theater Company. Moses currently serves as an artistic associate for Honolulu Theater for Youth. We asked Moses to describe how his work reflects his pico. Hello, my cock. Oh, my name is Moses. I'm an actor and a playwright here in Hawaii, originally from the island of Maui, but I've been living in Honolulu for a few decades now. Now, to address the prompt of how 
does my work reflect my pico? To answer that, I need to go back to the beginning of my journey as a theater artist. This was right after my time at the University of Hawaii. Keep in mind, this was way back. This was Ikawa Kahiko. This was a time before Kumu Hailiopua was doing the amazing work that she's doing now. I emerged from that program into a theater world that didn't have much for a young Hawaiian in terms of the stories being told, the work being done. And I knew that theater, I knew back then that theater has the power to change lives, to shape journeys, and if I'm going to sustain a career in theater, telling someone else's stories for the rest of my life didn't sit well with me. So back then, early on in my career, I made a decision against all logic, and that decision was to create work that spoke to who I am, spoke to my na'o, that spoke to, spoke about where I'm from, who I'm from, where I'm going. And that's what I've been doing since, and that's what I'm committed to doing for the rest of my career. Mahalo. Kaylee Keola Simpson is a graduate student at the University of Hawaii at Manoa in his final year of his MFA in directing program. We asked Keola, as a working actor in both Hawaii and New York, what he considers his kahua. Following his response, we'll see an excerpt of his work. My foundation in the theater. What do I have to say? Do I have something to say? If I don't have something to say, I'm probably not gonna do it, or I shouldn't be at least. Um, when I'm in New York, this is, this is what I take with me. It, it, it's, I have to remember what this thing represents um, and, and who else it represents too. And a lot of times I you know, have to say no. Um, I have to be picky with what this thing ends up representing in someone else's work. And, and, and um, you know, the intentions are great in New York and everybody has something to say. And a lot of times you were pitching in on someone else's message and, and, and vice versa. You know, that, that, that experience is shared. Back in Hawaii, um, if I'm amplifying anything differently or, um, or more is um, the intention and reminding um, people, theater people here and in Hawaii why we do this and what this medium is for and, and, and what you can accomplish through it and what, what you can change through it. And sometimes it's hard and sometimes it just happens, but more so the, the intention behind it. What do you have to say? Tell me you have something to say. I don't care if I disagree with you. I actually don't mind if I disagree with you. I just want to know that you have something to say and you're standing up for it and you're using this medium to try to achieve it. Um, so if I have a foundation in the theater, it is it is that. We are so excited to be able to present this diverse array of perspectives through our festival production artists. Throughout this virtual series, we'll also be sharing more on our conference offerings, including new play readings, workshops, featuring Indigenous and POC perspectives in directing, discussions on our shared issues, lots of time and space for affinity group sessions, and much more. Over the last year, we have been planning and conducting engagement events with Hawaii's youth, theater community, and artists who live on the island of Oahu. With the goal of building a multi-generational audience for Confest Hawaii. Uh, one of the most exciting parts of these activities for me have been our teaching artist residencies, where artists exchange best practices with each other while training a new generation of teaching artists. We were able to begin this work thanks to the TCG Audience Revolution Grant. 
and with the help of our cohort partner organizations, which include Theater Productions, Inamona Theater, Queen Lili Uokalani Trust, T-Shirt Theater, and the University of Hawaii Manoa Hawaii Theater Program. Artists from these theaters have conducted theater workshops for hundreds of youth across the island of Oahu and have hosted these students at their theaters. As we get closer to ConFest 2021, we will be offering a fellowship program to train young leaders in theater. Stay tuned for more information about the application process. And thank you again to the TCG Audience Revolution Grant for enabling, enabling us to begin audience development and to the Lili Uokalani Trust for coordinating with their youth programs to work with us. We hope to continue this work over the next year virtually and hopefully again in person. Haile Opua, would you like to tell us more about the Hawaiian Theater Program? Yes, mahalo, mahalo. <clears throat> Established in 2014 at the University of Hawaii at Manoa in the Department of Theater and Dance, the Hawaiian Theater Program offers a Master's of Fine Arts in Hawaiian Theater. This is the only graduate Indigenous theater program of its kind. The program includes courses on the history of theater in Hawaii, the study and analysis of indigenous Hawaiian theater, and training in both traditional and contemporary Hawaiian performance forms. Our original Hanakiaka productions reflect and honor the language, traditions, history, and values of Kanaka. A primary focus of the program is to build capacity in the discipline of Hawaiian theater. By growing practitioners of Hanakiaka, actors, playwrights, directors, designers, technicians, and patrons in order to grow the profession of Hanakiaka. The curriculum and productions of the Hawaiian theater program builds on the vision and intentions of Kahalo Hanakiaka, a Hawaiian medium theater troupe founded by Dr. Kaliko Baker and myself in 1996. Through the institutionalization of Hanakiaka, we've expanded and amplified the efforts to revitalize and promote the Hawaiian language and empower Kanaka Maoli identity and consciousness. At this time, I'd like to turn to the upcoming Kanaka Maoli theater artists who have embarked on the journey to pursue an MFA in Hawaiian theater. The Rihanna, Bitao, Aina, Pico, and Kahua are reflected in their work and their aspirations for Hanakeaka. We begin with our first Haumana and graduate of the program, Pua Kahiki. Kau'i vehilani i kapo mahina laila i kaina. Kau'i was raised in the Hawaiian language and immersed in Hawaiian cultural practices from a very young age. I was elated when she entered the program because of her language and cultural fluency, as well as her understanding of Hawaiian performance genres. We could not have asked for a more ideal first candidate to matriculate through our program. He la'au ku ho'okahi, he lehua no kaua kani lehua. Here's Kaui's response on the influence of Aina in her work. Aloha mai kako o kaui kaina koui noa. I have been very fortunate to be a part of the Hawaiian theater program at UH Manoa. Uh, in my studies there, I was able to develop uh, the various skills from Hanakiaka to connecting it to the Ike Ku'una of Mo'olelo or stories of our ancestors. In this, able to take the foundation and Ike of our Kupuna and be able to contem contempor contemporalize it um, into a modern perspective so that our audience of today can connect with the Ike of our Kupuna. Uh, with my uh, thesis production of Nakawa Hi'iaka, one of the biggest things that I recognized was the remembrance and the bringing forth of names 
that our kupuna had names for our rains, rain, names for winds, names for mountains, oceans, um, the land in which we live on. Uh, in this, I have been able to take this ike, um, the skills that I um, was able to develop in this program and apply it into the classroom. Uh, the past few summers I've been fortunate to work with Halau Kupu Kupu uh, at Kamehameha along with other uh, theater programs with Keiki and these are students from 6th to 8th grade where uh, we're able to take our haumana to the places of these mo'olelo so that they can connect with them on a physical level, connect with these places on an emotional and on a spiritual level. Our students were then able to uh, write the scripts to internalize this ike and make it and have it become their own and eventually produce these mo'olelo or these plays um, through their own works. In this, um, we have seen, or I have also seen, how much they have grown and their appreciation, their love of land, their love of people, Lahui, and their love of who they are and where they come from. All of this uh, stemming from the Mo'olelo and our Iki of our Kupuna, uh, then being able to be brought forth through Hanakiaka. As we see, Aina has grounded Kaui's work as a theater artist and olapahula and kumu. Her thesis production, Kaua Iaka, was also grounded in Aina, amplifying traditional cultural values and the complicated nature of familial relationships. Here's a clip of the treasured story of Hiiaka Ikapolio Pele. Like La Ie Kavai, Nakawa Hiyaka is available online at OEV Television with subtitles or without for your consumption. We move now to our second uh, Haumana in the MFA program. Entering his final year in the MFA program, Akea Kahikina is an accomplished actor and an upcoming playwright who is breaking new ground with his theatrical endeavors. I asked him about the future of Hawaiian theater and his foundation, or Kahua. Ano ay Miki Aloha. Uh, my name is Kaipula Mukaniolono. I am a MFA candidate in the Hawaiian theater program at the University of Hawaii at Manoa. And to be a Kanaka Maoli theater artist. What that means to me and what I see as my kuleana is um, I feel that we need to tell the stories of our people so that our people can appreciate our people for who we are. Um, and for us to laugh. Miki Aloha e na hua makamaka o kahana keaka. Aloha mai kako, my name is Akea Kahikina and I am one of the MFA students at UH Manoa's Hanakiaka program. Super excited to talk a little bit about our theme, Kuwaina, Kuupiko, Kuukahua, Return to the Source. Um, I'll be kind of talking about um, Kahua and Kahua for us in Hawaiian means foundation. And we also use that word for our stage. And I don't think that's a coincidence because without a stage in theater, we 
can't do much without any kind of production. And in Hawaiian um, perspective, we have a saying, Oke kahua mamua, mahope ke kukulu. So first the foundation, then the building. You can't do anything unless you have something to base all of your things off of. And in Hawaiian perspective, that is our kukuna, our ancestors, and our mo'olelo, our stories, our mo'oku oho, our genealogy, and all of the hananoia, all of those um, cultural um, skills that make up what our culture is. So without those four things, we can't move forward. And it goes for hanakeaka as well. Without those four things in our in our stories, um, we can't move forward. And so when I think about that in terms of the, the future of hanakeaka, um, my thesis comes to mind because in previous um, apahana or projects, a lot of the traditional stories are taken from the newspaper and um, put in like just how it is in that form. And so for my thesis, I'm looking at um, experimenting with the contemporary Kanaka Maoli voice um, setting a story in current time and seeing what that looks like with Olala Hawaii and our all of our things that were thriving back then and are, are returning to thrive now. Um, but looking at how doing contemporary stories, um, how does that interact with our contemporary audience um, and seeing what kind of problems are parallel to our kupuna then and now, see how far we've come and where we need to go. So yeah, that's basically me. And I'm super excited to hear more about all of your projects and see um, the amazing, amazing work that you all do. So mahalo for listening and ahui ho, we'll see you soon. And we've had a sneak peek of Ka'i Pula Makani Olono already. Um, I'll introduce him though. He's entering his second year in the MFA program. He is a playwright, an actor, and a director. His plays deal with Kanaka building and Kanaka standing by their altars in contemporary times. Kaipu's current project is a Hawaiian language comedy. I posed a question about Pico to him, and here's his response. Ano ay Mike Aloha. Uh, my name is Kaipu Laumakani Olono. I am a MFA candidate in the Hawaiian Theater Program at the University of Hawaii at Manoa. And to be a Kanaka Maoli theater artist, what that means to me and what I see as my kuleana is, um, I feel that we need to tell the stories of our people so that our people can appreciate our people for who we are. Um, and for us to laugh at our mistakes and learn from them, for us to celebrate our triumphs and even further improve upon them uh, and for us to celebrate who we are where we come from and in that celebration we can plan for where we want to go and how we're gonna get there um, so theater for me is all about having a history and telling that history, articulating that history so that we can make a future. Uh, and that's what being a Kanaka Maoli theater artist is for me. These three artists represent the future of Hanakiaka. They are connected to their aina. They honor their piko. And each of them builds upon the kahua Hawaii that grounds them in their artistry and identity. Both Akea and Kaipu Laumakaniolono were cast members in our last production, Aua'ia Holding On, which garnered much media attention for the play's content and approach to reclaim Hawaiian history. Following the production's opening, Aua'ia Holding On was invited to perform at the Reflections of Native Voices inaugural Native Theater Festival in New York City by Muriel Borst Tarrant and her late husband, Kevin Tarrant, who we lost to the COVID-19 pandemic. Aloha no ekehoa. 
Ua hoi aku oi me o mau kūpuna. E moi, e moi. This trip was the first time to the East Coast for the majority of the cast. And we were honored to tell our story in our native tongue on a stage in the city that many regard as the Mecca of theater. This was also likely the first time a Hawaiian language production was performed on the stages of New York Theater Workshop, the Mama Experimental Theater, and theater for the new city. Mahalo anui to the many individuals, donors, and supporters who made this tour possible, especially Hawaiian Airlines, the Robert Long Performing Arts Charitable Fund, Glenn Cannon Foundation, the Don Chin Young Foundation, the Edward Langis Fund, the Manaola Ohana, the Department of Theater and Dance Enrichment Fund, Provost Michael Bruno of the University of Hawaii at Manoa, and Sarah Lynn Smith and the officers and staff at the University of Hawaii Foundation. I'd like to extend my deepest gratitude and aloha to my dear friend Mariel of Safe Harbors Collective for the impetus to great this, create this gathering of indigenous artists and the invitation for us to participate in the Reflections of Native Voices Festival. Here is a trailer of Aua Ia Holding On that John Wells created during the rehearsal process. The trailer will be followed by a clip of the Aloha Aina medley in act two of our performance. I truly believe that the reason why we do the work we do is so that we remember the stories of our ancestors. And in doing so, we move ourselves forward and we, get, we gain a greater understanding of who we are as a people. So this particular story deals with four students who are enrolled here at the University of Hawaii at Manoa. They engage with history, they engage with the newspapers, they engage in archival materials, and in immersing themselves in the language and in the culture, they're able to kind of unlock knowledge and unlock understanding of texts. And in, in that understanding process, uh, they each go on a journey. And these particular journeys that happen take them to different times in our history. And those different times in our history are times where there is a shift in mana a shift in a societal shift where life is different for Kanaka Maoli. The entire journey as we follow the students is really about them coming to an understanding of what does it mean to be Kanaka Maoli in 2019. Taking part in this production is an honor because I get to experience not only the character as I would in a regular production, but the breath of our ancestors who are embedded in the production, who we are characterizing, who, are we, are, who we are portraying to the audience, to the university, and really to the whole world. We're really fortunate nowadays to have brilliant Kanaka minds who are thinking very rooted in our culture and looking very far forward. And with looking forward, they're keeping a very firm root in the past. I personally don't feel I was completely in control of this message as the script was being authored. I was following guidance and inspiration for this story to be told. And in weaving all the pieces together, I now understand what that message was meant to be. And I now understand why, with all the issues that are converging right now, why this is the time for this particular story to be conveyed. 
hopefully it can just strengthen us as a people and strengthen our community, whether you're Kanaka Maoli or not, whether you were born here or you moved here, mm -hmm. having a base or foundation of understanding of what the history of this land is and its people um, is the ultimate goal. Education can only make us better people. And if we can open up a doorway for people to walk in, mm -hmm. that's the major goal of the work that we're doing. Mahalo, Haile. That was um, that was such a wonderful production. It's just watching the video made me emotional. Yeah, um, uh, I'm hearing up. I'm hearing up. <laughs> <laughs> me too. Her voice um, is giving me chicken skin. Yeah. You know the um yeah, and that's you know live theater in general has that power, but for this and what it did for the Lahui, what it did for the Hawaiian community. Um, in a time where we were ex where we were experiencing a lot of challenges, um, yes. the, the weekend that I saw it, uh, there was a protest in Waikiki gathering thousands of Lahui and their supporters um, to fight against the um, the construction of the TMT on Mauna Kea and um, against other projects happening at control sites all over Hawaii. And so this, um, it just, 
you know, that couldn't be timed that they would open uh, at the same time. But it just, rep it, the, what our idea did was really represent the need in our community. Um, mm -hmm. um, and that need was addressed and the community showed up. Yes. Um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. I it it feels like uh, kind of like I said in that video, um, there our kupuna was conspiring. <laughs> yeah, they they made this happen at the time in which it happened because we needed it as a community. You know, Absolutely. we needed it. it. It was kind of like that battle cry. It was that raising, that elevating, and calling yeah. out. To everyone and letting everybody know that we hear, we know, yeah. And it, it absolutely lifted, lifted us as a community. And I think it made a huge statement, um, not just in that space at Kennedy Theater, but in the university and in our community, you know, for our Pai Aina. Um, and I'd like to mahalo you, Kaha'i Olelo, for responding to our production for KCACTF. KCC uh, you were the second respondent. The first respondent, I don't feel like they got it. The, they were straight from America and not really understanding um, what our community issues are. Uh, this is not to say that they dismiss the production at all, but I think that having someone like yourself, someone who is very much in tune with what is happening, really meant a lot to the cast. Um, it, it, it spoke volumes really to hear from someone from the inside and not, you know, we're never trying to look for validation from the outside. Mm -hmm. right? We shouldn't have to, we really shouldn't have to. So um, I remember after that first respondent, and I'm not trying to make this conversation about that, but I'm just gonna say, I remember after that first respondent, um, there was a, a shift in the vibe of the cast. And so I, um, I asked a good friend, um, Dr. Kalehua Krug to speak to the audience. And what he had to say was, you know, the audience is your validation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This, the fact that it sold out every performance and everybody was, you know, felt moved to their feet to join in the performance and to commune with the audience, with the, with the, with the cast, that was the validation. And so having you the following weekend, I think really, um, echoed that and and um, made everybody feel even better about what they what they were doing. Um, I, I just want to say that this production was probably the most impactful event that I've ever been in involved in in my life, and and so much of the message in the story was really about returning to our source, yeah, to the roots of our ancestor and yeah, of our ancestors, before. the language. Before yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry. I just wanted to say how power I was lucky enough to come and see it live and bring some of the board members with us on the site visit. And I it was so powerful even before walking in because um, you know, I grew up in Hawaii. I left right after high school. When I was growing up, there were, no one was speaking Olelo Hawaii, the indigenous language of Hawaii. You know, barely folks were speaking pidgin at longs anymore now you know and and to well, even just stand outside the theater before it even started i was about to cry just outside the theater because everyone standing in line is just kuka, kuka, like talking in hawaiian the whole time and i just i was like i know i look crazy i'm about to cry the show hasn't even started but the power of the community that now is fluent in the language because of the language revitalization that's been going on in hawaii because of the Hawaiian language immersion schools and every so many more people are, are speaking the language that now there's an audience for this work that is hungry to see it. And it was just so, I can't even, I just, I'm so excited to get Confest 
attendees to see it because it's just hard to imagine until you experience it live. And then the sharing between the audience throughout the show and the practice of the mahalo from the audience, the mahalo from the cast, like the show never ends because everybody is in celebration. Yeah. And it's just not an experience that Western theater goers know, you know? And I'm, yeah. just, I'm still looking yeah. forward to the contest attendees and membership to see this. It's it's gonna be amazing. Yeah, it's it's in a way. way I, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Oh no, yeah. In a way, just to echo what Leilani was saying, I wish the um, you know, the video cut out right before you saw the audience just reciprocate with so much aloha. Yeah. And you don't see that for you know, a standing ovation is a standing ovation. You don't get an audience chanting. Singing, you know, and doing oratory on their own from their own seats, yeah. um, just doing anything they could to reciprocate the like the amount of aloha that you all put into it. Yeah, and I mean this is a little bit. More, I mean the <laughs> I just trying to help the. Um, I never told you this, Holly, but I had come just from directing a play in, at Carpet Bag Theater in uh, Knoxville, Tennessee. And the play was called uh, Red Summer. And it was similar. And I saw so many similarities in Au Au Ia because that play is a devised theater piece taken from uh, newspaper articles from 1919 when the race riots were happening all around the country. And just what that language that was used in the newspapers, the racist language against Hawaiians was just um, almost the same as the racist language against the African-American community whose businesses were wiped out. So like when I say race riots, it wasn't black people burning everything down. It was white people burning the um, businesses down of the black people. So throughout the play, I was having these like, oh my, like, um, responses with the play I just directed on this systematic racism that puts down all of these cultures and how, how we're so unified, even though this is totally different cultures, unfortunately, this unification of this oppression, you know, it just, it's mirrored in everything. And it was just another level of experience I was having in, um, I was having so many experiences at the same time, watching, watching Awa'iya, it was just, so incredible. Yeah, um, it's it's interesting. Uh, mahalo for sharing that. It's very interesting you talk about those reactions or what you was feeling while you were watching, um, <clears throat> because I know of numerous people who were in the audience who had really visceral experiences to particular scenes, um, and my father was one of them he really, really wanted somebody licking basically, you know, because, um, and then it's just being faced with the history, right? Um, and then I think as we're processing, you know, it's a different story that we were we were taught in, in the textbooks. This is not what we were taught in the, in the whitewashed textbooks. So mm -hmm. to have, um, that reclaiming of history in front of you, right? And seeing the embodiment of that and the emotions, how it charges us, you know, it, it, it angered a lot of people. Um, it, it, uh, it healed a lot of people as well. You know, there was a lot of tears, a, a lot of tears in the cast, a lot of tears in my part is in writing, but actually getting it up on its feet and then every night experiencing that over and over again. And um, not to put my dad on the spot, but I just wanted to share about visceral experiences mm -hmm. in, in that scene where we see the vignettes of um, you know statehood and the militarization of Hawaii uh, when the military people came into the house, right? We have the the the, the sailors come in and they go to touch the, the 
female hula dancers. Uh, my dad actually got up and my mom had to pull him down. He was ready to attack one of the sailors. And so that's how real it was for people in the audience, right? And, and he wasn't the only one. I know of another uncle who had a similar experience and actually went to do something and was pulled back in his chair as well. So living through this history, right, and experiencing it all over again, but knowing what we know today mm -hmm. and not what was just taught to us in those textbooks. Yeah. Knowing what we know today because of the repositories of Hawaiian language newspapers that we can now access, that we now have the skills to read and to digest and to analyze these works, right? We can read the words of our kupuna and get their perspective of what happened. And so no longer, no longer do we have to kind of pretend that we're okay with going along with the history that we were forced right? We can say, wait a minute, there's a reason why I'm feeling this in my na'au and here's evidence that supports these feelings, right? Wow. The, wow. this testimony from our kupuna. So, um, you know, like I was saying, this the message behind Aua'ia was really for us to return to our source, to return to the roots of our ancestors, the language of our ancestors, the stories, the beliefs, the prayers of our ancestors. You know, Aua'ia was really about retaining and reclaiming our history and our mana as native people, as the indigenous inhabitants of Ko Hawaii Pai Aina, with the thought that we will reclaim our land. Yeah. In the next generation, this will be Ko Hawaii Pai Aina. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Ola. Yeah. Ola. <laughs> it's about Ola as well. Sorry. It's yeah. heavy, but it's about Ola. Yeah. You know, I, I remember um, when I wrote the first draft. Sorry. I'm going to just share, share another anecdote. When I wrote the first draft, and, you know, I shared it with my partner. He took a look at it. And, and then he said, Why do you have to write something so painful and so sad? <laughs> You know, and my response was, you know, um, it's not just sad. It's about resilience. We're still here, even though those that those key individuals, right, the Committee of Safety, who sought out to obliterate us, are still here. Wola, wola kako. That's no. The message, yeah. and also seeing it again. I hope next year, <laughs> given our current times, I feel like there's another level of viewing that we as audience members will have, given everything going around the world and and in the U.S. Like I, I there's so many themes repeated in Aua'ia that are relevant. Scarily, not to be right. scary, but yes, yeah, right. yeah. I know it resonates even more now. Yes. So, Confest 2021. <laughs> 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 yes, 2021. So we can uh, the next. Yes, thank you, Mahalo. Oh, there's my beautiful cast from Masters of the Current. A uh, majority of those cast members are Micronesian based in Honolulu, Hawaii. So crossing fingers, we can still, we were, at, if this were happening, Confess right now, we'd be in like, you'd be performing out at IA, right? It would have gone up Monday. Tonight. Tonight. Yeah. Been, we would all be seeing it live. <laughs> and um, Masters of Current would be at the end of the week. Um, with and hopefully bringing in lots of folks and from community as well as from confess attendees and uh, so crossing fingers both productions will be able to be done in May as well 
hopefully. <laughs> and yeah. putting that out there for positive energy to make sure it happens. Um, sorry, I'm off script now. Where are we at? Oh. No, no worries, no worries, no worries. <laughs> um, I'll, I'll bring us. I'll bring us back, maybe. Uh, so you know, we we we've been talking, and it's been a year we've been planning, and and so much of. Um, the discussion we've had is about how imperative it is that we support theater companies that pay homage to their source. Theaters that tell stories about their people for their people. Theaters that move the center and decolonize the stage. And theaters that raise the consciousness of our people and, <clears throat> excuse me, empower our identity and our voice. So with that, we want to say, let us channel that energy of meaningful, impactful, healing theater practices to inspire us. And we, we want to start an online conversation. So in preparation for Kata Confess 2021, let us all join in reflecting on the following questions. So as theater makers, what is your source? How do you reconnect with your source? Are you searching for your source? And, and finally, how is your source reflected in your work? And we want all of you in the audience to feel like you have a voice in this conversation. Um, and we'd love to hear that voice. So please share your mana'o, please share your thoughts and perspectives um, by, um, making video, um, photo, or text posts on uh, using these social media handles and the three hashtags you see below. Hashtag return to the source, hashtag HI Confest, and, uh, and hashtag Kata 2021. Yes, hashtags. <laughs> <laughs> hashtag return to the source. <laughs> Um, so we encourage you all to tune in every second Monday for our virtual series as we engage with theater artists of color from around the world. Uh, join us for conversations about their art forms, their processes, their sources of inspiration, and the issues facing theater makers today. Let us all return to the source. And these are the virtual series that is being um, hosted by various members of the Kata board and steering committee for Confest. So know that the virtual series is going to be moving around the country um, to different theaters and artists, um, bringing together different topics, different genres, different ethnic uh, communities. And so really go to our website or go to the HowlRound website. I believe they have it listed there too with a further description of each of these sessions and who's hosting each of them. Um, it's going to be a lot of, most of them have been, if not all of them, um, have been created around either a festival artist that was uh, chosen to be in the festival or around panels and themes that were discussed in our various meetings and through the panel applications. Majority is through the panel applications. Um, and also there'll be other affinity spaces, conversations that we hope get started over the next year as a point of discussion so that we can celebrate when we come together mid-sentence. <laughs> so, um, and let's see, as we, as we move forward, um, we are so excited to be offering this virtual series as an opportunity to begin the dialogue and discussions in the field that would have started today by gathering in person in Hawaii. However, this means Kata is adding an additional year of programming and planning, which as you all know, has a financial impact. So as we close out our day today, please consider renewing your membership early. I know many people uh, do their membership when there is a confest. So check yourself, see if it's been over a year since you made your membership. Um, and also, if you're not a member, consider becoming a member. 
um, or you can donate to Kata um, directly. Just uh, make a donation on our website. Do you have the QR codes, Max? Um, and uh, those will the the donations will continue to help us to pay artists, staff, and crew for this virtual series and for Confest 2021. Mahalo, Max. <laughs> So as another thing to do um, after this is that Kata continues to participate in national conversations and activism in our field with other networks of color. Most immediately, there is something you can do to help. Kata board members have been working with the UCLA Asian American Studies professor, Dr. Lucy Burns, and the Latinx Theater Commons, and other networks of color to develop two surveys. One survey is for individuals who are theater practitioners and who are from the Black, Indigenous, People of Color uh, community. And another is for theaters of color or organizations of color um, from the Black, Indigenous, theaters of color community. So please take a moment to fill out those surveys. They shouldn't, they're about 15 minutes. Um, but just to be clear, the purpose of these surveys is to understand the immediate and projected long-term impact of the pandemic, specifically on our theaters and artists. And we wanna be armed with this information with the goal being to hold funders and institutions accountable for responding to the needs of our theaters and artists in this moment. Before we leave you today, we'd like to make sure we acknowledge our, found, uh, our funders and partners, Ford Foundation, Doris Duke Charitable Foundation, National Endowment for the Arts, Howl Round Theater Commons, Queen Ili'o Colony Trust, University of Hawaii at Manoa, Teira Productions, T-Shirt Theater, Kennedy Theater, and TCG Theater Commons Group. Mahalo Anui for your support. And mahalo to Nifa as well. And we'd like to extend a special mahalo to HowlRound for hosting our series, Return to the Source, and mahalo to the series live producer and Kata staff member, Ariel Estrada, and the series technical director, Maximiliano Uruz Mendi Mele, and a special mahalo as well to my co-host today, Leilani Chan and Kaha'i Olelo Suioka. Mahalo for us three getting this one off the ground. <laughs> um, so we'll see you all next month for Ku'u Aina, Ku'u Pico, Ku'u Kahua, Return to the Source. Ke aloha no kako. Oh, mahalo. Aloha nui. Mahalo. Ahui ho. <laughs> Ahui ho until we meet again. Uh...